Okay, a worked example taken directly from Zatilli's book. Particle in a box revisited, re, 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 revisited. We're going to do a worked example now. Problems like this, these type of um, uh, questions could very easily turn up in, uh, in an exam. And we'll be working towards the, um, closer to the exam period, we'll be working through old exam papers and, well, not so old, recent exam papers. And you'll see certain questions like these crop up um, with um, some degree of regularity. Let's put it that way. Anyway, here is that question. It's on page 67 of the notes in um, section 4.3. A particle of mass m moves freely inside an infinite potential well of length a and has the following initial wave function at t equal to zero, given by that where A is a real constant. First of all, it says, find A so that psi x0 is normalized. So first of all, what we need to recognize is that that's a superposition. It's a linear combination of the basis states. And what are the basis states for the well? The basis states for the well are U and X, if they're normalized, 2L sine n pi x, uh, actually it's dependent in terms of A in this case, over A, over A, where A is the width of the well. Now if we look at that, if we look at that particular wave function as it's expressed there, what we have is that, make sure you can see on the basis of this, where this is coming from, what we have is xt equal to zero, is equal to a over root 2 times u1x plus root 3 over 10 times u3x plus, sorry, 1 over root 10 times u5x. All we're doing is recouching the psi that's um, given in the question, which is equation 423 in the notes, in terms of the basis functions. And that's what we have. Now, what we know is that for a state to be normalized, that this condition must hold true. That's our probability density, that's our probability between x to x plus dx, and if we integrate that over the width of the well, that's got to be equal to 1. That's just our, our normal condition for normalization. Okay, you could do this the very long-winded way. You could take each one of these functions, um, you're going to have to take the multiply this, take the complex conjugate of this, Complex conjugate of a real function is just the function itself, and you're going to have to multiply it through. You're going to end up with lots of cross terms with u1s multiplied by u3s, and u3s multiplied by u5s, and u1s multiplied by u5s, etc. You're going to have to do every single one of those and put the integral limits in. You could do it that way, and um, perhaps you might finish before the end of the two hour or three hour exam. However, the much more elegant, much more efficient, much quicker way to do it is exploit orthonormality. So, what we're going to have for this um, particular integral is we're going to have zero for any cross term. So anything which is u1 by u3 or u1 by u5 or u3 by u5, etc. Those are going to zero because the basis set, the basis functions are orthonormal. So unless we have u1 by u1 or u3 by u3 or u5 by u5, those integrals are going to be zero. And if we have u1 by u1, or u3 by u3, or u5 by u5, the integrals are going to be 1. Isn't that wonderful? That's the beauty of orthonormality. When we get to Dirac notation, we're going to exploit orthonormality, and calculations that would take, you know, if you were to do them the hard way, the long way, in terms of doing the integrals laboriously by hand until you weep, you can do them just like that by exploiting orthonormality. So,
the only integrals are going to be u1 by u1, u3 by u3, and u5 by u5, and those integrals are going to go to 1, which means that this condition reduces to a squared over 2 plus 3 over 10 plus 1 over 10 equals 1. Pretty much by observation. So what we end up with is the squares of the coefficients, which again, in terms of the Born rule, tells us they must be equal to 1. So you could also just use the Born rule and go, well, this is the coefficient of my first eigenstate, coefficient of my second eigenstate, the coefficient of my third eigenstate. I know if I square those and add them together, it's got to be equal to 1. So you can approach it either way. You can approach it in terms of the orthonormality, or you can just take the Born rule as, uh, as given as we all do, and um, add up the squares of the coefficients. Just don't do the integrals by hand. Please don't do the integrals by hand. I made this plea last year, and, and still there were some who attempted to do the integrals by hand. Right, so if we've got that, that in turn, if I can find the thing for the board, you can do the algebra, means that A, means that a is equal to root 6 over 5. That in turn means that for our overall uh, wave function, in terms of the basis states, we're going to have psi x t equal to 0 is equal to, let me get these, root 3 over 5, u1 plus root 3 over 10, u3 plus 1 over root 10, u5. And make sure, let's just make sure, 3 fifths plus 3 tenths plus 1 tenth, 3 tenths and 1 tenth is 4 tenths, that's 2 fifths plus 3 fifths gives us 1. So the squares of the coefficients equal to 1, properly normalised. Right. If measurements of energy are carried out, what are the values that will be found and what are the corresponding probabilities? Calculate the average energy. Now, there's a long way of doing this, again, and there's a short way of doing this. Short way is, is as follows. What are the energies um, that we can measure? Well, we've only, remember that when we make a measurement, we collapse the state into an eigenstate of that particular operator. Now in this case we're making a measurement of energy, therefore the operator is the Hamiltonian, therefore the eigenstates into which we'll collapse the system are the eigenfunctions of the Hamiltonian, which are these, u1, u3 and u5. Therefore if we make a measurement of energy, the only eigenstates we can collapse the system into are u1, u3 and u5 because those are the only ones that are in the overall mix. Those are the only ones that are contributing to the quantum state. There was a reason I spent so much time in Fourier analysis. Um, so, therefore, our energy, the only energy eigenvalues we can m measure, the only energies we can measure, are the eigenvalues associated with these eigenstates, i.e. E1 or E3 or E5. So the energy eigenvalues we can measure are E1, E3, or E5. What are the probabilities? Well, the probabilities for measuring each of those energy eigenvalues are the probabilities associated with when we make a measurement collapsing the state into one of the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian. I've already said what those are. 3 fifths, 3 tenths, 1 tenth. So we have a 3 fifth probability of collapsing the state into the first, collapsing the quantum state into the first eigenstate of the Hamiltonian, i.e. of measuring E1, three-tenths probability of measuring E3, one-tenth probability of measuring E5. That's the quick way of doing it. The other way of doing it is to calculate the expectation value for energy using the expectation value integral. We will see other examples of that, and you're actually asked to do that and compare that in one of the worksheets. But in terms of an exam, I want you to be, I want you to develop some intuition for quantum mechanics. I want you to be able to look at an overall quantum state like this and go, 
by inspection, go, okay, I've got a three-fifths probability of measuring E1, a three-tenths probability of measuring E3, and a three-tenths, and a one-tenth probability of measuring E5. And I will collapse the system into one of those eigenstates with those probabilities. That, you know, instead of quantum being seen as this, oh, it's all conceptually challenging, you can only do it in terms of the maths, and it, none of it makes sense. It makes sense. The overall framework is very logical. Really, free analysis is right at the core of it, at least the idea of constructing a function from a set of basis functions is really at the core of it. And once you get those ideas, it's not simple. I'm not saying it's simple, but it's certainly a lot more comfortable. Let's put it that way. Right, what's the next question? Find the wave function psi xt at any later time t. Okay, so this is just pretty straightforward. This is xt at zero. So if that's our opening, if that's our starting state for t equal to zero, then it's really straightforward because remember it's a linear combination and it's separable. Therefore, xt will be root three five u one by e to the minus i e one t over h bar plus root 3 tenths u3 e to the minus i e3 t over h bar plus 1 over root 10 u5 e to the minus i e5 t over h bar. Simple as that, done. Spatial term, spatial function, temporal function. Spatial function, temporal function. Spatial function, temporal function. Coefficient associated with this eigenstate. Coefficient associated with that eigenstate. Coefficient associated with that eigenstate. Energy associated with that eigenstate. Energy associated with that eigenstate. Energy associated with that eigenstate. And finally, determine the probability of finding the system at a time t in that state uh, phi, which equals that, then determine the probability of finding it in that particular state. So, what we're going to use here is the overlap integral, which is covered back in section 2.2, which tells us how much of this particular state is in the overall quantum state, and therefore the probability for finding this particular state. We could do it by inspection, but again, on the basis of orthonormality, but let's just let me fill in a few of the steps just so you get this this overall concept. So first of all, let me look at that state again. What we have is psi x t. Make sure you can see this is basically our fifth eigenstate multiplied by e to the minus i. That's our fifth eigenstate. The probability of finding the system in this state at a given time t is given by the overlap integral of this state, okay, which is going to be between 0 and a. Remember, overlap integral, what we want to do is take the complex conjugate of that by our overall quantum state, psi. And we want that. That gives us, that basically tells us how much of this state is in this overall quantum state. And then to get the probability, what we take is the modulus squared of whatever that might be. And because of that wonderful orthonormality, that means that the, everything else is going to drop out apart from the term u5 by u5. And then that integral will be 1, leaving us with the only thing to consider is the coefficient associated with u5 in this, which is 1 over root 10. Give that squared is equal to 1 over 10. So at any given time, the probability of finding the system in the fifth energy eigenstate is 1 tenth. Notice. And this is important, and we will come back to this right at the end, chapter 8. Notice that that's exactly the same probability as which we started with. 
we say that the wave function, the quantum state, is unitary. Probability density, probability is conserved. So if we kick off with a probability of one tenth, at any future time, we will measure a probability of one tenth for that particular state. Now, for the next, if I look at the final question, then determine the probability of finding it in the state chi x of t is equal to that. Well, that, take a look at that. What is that? That's the second energy eigenstate. Remember, if we look at our overall wave function, we have the first, third, and fifth energy eigenstate. What is the probability of measuring the second energy eigenstate? It's zero. It's not in the mix. It's not in the mix in terms of linear combination of superposition of the basis states to give us the overall quantum state. U2, the second eigenfunction, isn't there. Therefore, the probability of measuring that state at any time is zero. So let's see that in terms of a simulation again. I'm going to modify a previous simulation um, called the particle, which is embedded in a blog post called the particle in a box is not simple. Um, I'm just going to modify that slightly so we've got the same mixture of eigenstates as we have in this particular problem, just so you can see how this works out when we try to make a measurement of energy, what happens. Okay. Let's go and look at the computer over there. Let's take a look at the evolution of that particular quantum state that we've just covered on the blackboard in real time. Here's what it starts off as in terms of we've got a mixture of the first eigenstate, the third eigenstate and the fifth eigenstate. And we've got a coefficient of zero, square root of 0 0.6 for the first eigenstate coefficient of uh, square root of uh, 0 0.3 for the second eigenstate for the, sorry for the third eigenstate and then we've got a coefficient of 1 over root 10 for the um, fifth eigenstate so a probability of 3 fifths for getting the first eigenstate a probability of 3 tenths for getting the third eigenstate and a probability of 1 tenth for getting the fifth eigenstate that's what it looks like at t is equal to 0 that's basically the state we have we're now going to let it run and because we have a mixture of eigenstates and not just a pure eigenstate this thing is going to evolve in time so let's let it start and that's what it looks like in this case i've chosen the well width to be the a effectively to one nanometer so this this time is realistic for um, an electron in a well of that width we're talking about sort of evolution in the time scale of femtoseconds 10 to the minus 15 seconds so this is happening quickly and you can see the probability density is wobbling around. What I've plotted here is basically just an intensity map of this. So the brighter the, um, the plot up here, the higher the probability density. So, and you can see it's evolving in time. Now we're going to make a measurement. Just as the question asked, if measurements or energy are, the ca are carried out, what are the values that will be found and what are the corresponding probabilities? So let's make a measurement of energy. Bang! It collapses into an eigenstate of the Hamiltonian. In this case, it collapses into the third eigenstate. So we measure E3. Notice that time is still running. If I measure energy again, what happens? I get the same thing. Time's reset. Every time I make a measurement, time's reset. Notice that. And I'm continually making measurements of energy. But it's collapsed into an eigenstate of the Hamiltonian. Therefore, when you make a measurement of energy, i.e. we apply the Hamiltonian operator, it's already in an eigenstate, in the third eigenstate. It's going to stay there as long as we measure energy. Now, if we measure something else, all well, bets are off. Well, not quite. We can work out the probabilities. But in this case, if we keep measuring energy, this is going to stay just like this. So it's a pretty dramatic example of the measurement process causing um, a, a very big disturbance on the system. Remember, this is different from Heisenberg uncertainty. Heisenberg uncertainty is basically fundamental fun Fourier analysis in terms of the reciprocal relationship between position and momentum. This is the measurement problem in that we've collapsed the system into an eigenstate of the, um, the operator. Okay, so what do we do then? We just have to reset right back to where we started. There's our initial state. Let's run it again. If we measure energy this time, what are we going to get? Get the first eigenstate. Again, if I keep trying to measure energy, I'm just going to get that first eigenstate. So we have to reset. Let's start again. Measure 
energy again collapses into the first eigenstate okay reset start measure energy okay this time in this fifth eigen energy eigenstate but notice that all we're getting is the first third and fifth eigenstates because those are the only eigenstates in the quantum mix moreover we should if we run it for long enough what we should see is that there's a higher probability for measuring the first eigenstate there it is again and again okay fifth first again because the probability for measuring that is root three fifth squared so it's 0.6 the probability for measuring the third eigenstate is 0.3 so that's 0 0.6 0 0.3 which means that the probability for measuring the final eigenstate is 1 over 10 0.1 they add up to 1 as we'd expect so we see this weighting towards the first eigenstate there it is again when we measure energy Okay, I hope that helped. We've got the analytical side, we've got the simulation side, and I think seeing this stuff in real time, certainly the um, reaction students last year, was seeing this stuff sort of happen before your eyes in real time really brings home just what's going on here. Okay, onwards and upwards. See you for the next video. Bye.